Let's go ahead and create this dog ear effect on this box that we can see here. It basically simulates um, the corner of the container uh, being bent over or peeled over. So we're going to go ahead and create this box first. We're going to fill it with some text and then we're going to create this dog ear effect. The reason that we're adding text in here is because um, the nature of how this works, if we have too much text, it can actually overlap the dog ear and that basically just removes the entire effect because you'll have text over the overlapping piece. So this is fairly simple. It falls back to not having a dog ear in older browsers that don't support it. And it does have very good cross browser compatibility. And there's also not a lot of CSS involved. So let's go ahead and create the uh, markup and the container for this. And then we'll start to create the dog ear effect. Okay, so in my text editor, I have a basic document layout and I have included a global CSS style sheet. I've just linked that in here. So let's create the container now for the actual box itself. So we'll give this a class of box and we'll be chaining on the dog ear class, which the reason we're doing this is because uh, it will be reusable. So it'll look like this. We can add this to pretty much any container we want. Um, and you can go ahead and add uh, additional classes to make this work with different colors, different sizes and things like that. So I'm going to say this is my favorite box and I love it. So we now have this on the page. If we just refresh, we have this on the page. So we've got uh, just nothing basically. So inside of our global CSS file, let's make the styles for the box. This is fairly straightforward, but there are a couple of things we need to do on any container that we do include a dog ear on, simply because we're going to be using absolute positioning. So the container that you add the dog ear to must have a position of relative to ensure that the dog ear that we're going to put to the top right doesn't float off to uh, outside of this container. So let's give this a background. We'll give this a background of E, D, E, F, F, zero. That's just a nice sort of gray color there. And for the width, we'll do 180. For the height, we'll also do 180. And we will give this a padding of 10 pixels. So that's basically pushing this out now to be 200 in width and 200 in height. So we now have this effect. Cool. So temporarily, let's just give this a margin of 20 pixels. That just pushes it away from the edge of the page just so we can focus on that a little bit better. And there's a couple of other things we want to do. We want to give this a border radius. Uh, I'll just do five pixels. This will just round the edges out. And we'll give this a border bottom of four pixels solid and CCC. So now that we've done this, let's take a look here. Cool. So there are uh, some other properties that we want to add to this later. We're going to add a padding right to this. So let's go ahead and uh, comment this out. And we're going to add a padding of, say, 25 pixels. So once we've created the actual dog ear, we're going to do that so that this text here doesn't overlap the dog ear. OK, so now we want to create the generic reusable dog ear class. So that is dog ear. Now, we're going to be using pseudo elements. We're going to be using the before and after pseudo element. Now, the purpose of this is we need to create a triangle here. So the um, if I just zoom in, the triangle will be from here to here and then out here and then in here. So we'll create a triangle shape there for the peeled over piece of paper. But what we also want to do is we want an after pseudo element to blank out this part here. And we're going to match that with the color of the background of whatever container you're placing this on. In this case, it will be white. Now, if this doesn't make too much sense, don't worry. You will see why we need to do this in just a moment. Let's keep this zoomed in at uh, 175. So the dog ear before and dog ear after pseudo elements need to have a few properties. And these are shared between both, so we can just uh, use a double selector here. So the content's going to be empty. We're not adding any content in here. We're going to have a display of block on both of these elements. And these are going to be positioned to the right and the top. So it's top right we want these. And as I mentioned earlier, these are going to be absolute positioned. Um, 
And that just means that we can use these properties to place them where we want. So if I just type A in, in the content, you can see that when we inspect this and have a look inside. Oh, sorry, we haven't added. So let's add the dog ear class on. There. So we've got the A now. And if we inspect this, you can actually see that we've got the before and after pseudo elements here. So now to go ahead and style these. So let's get rid of that A. For the dog ear uh, after, this is basically going to be the actual triangle that looks like it's peeled over. So we're going to use... Um, some CSS basically just to create a triangle and this is this can be used just on a normal page it's not specific to pseudo elements but we say a border top 20 pixels solid and transparent Now this is a little bit hacky um, but this triangle trick's been used for quite a while now all we're doing is we're basically creating a border on the top um, and a border again on the left what this is going to do is it's going to push this uh, border through and it's going to create a point so when I say 20 pixels solid and give this a color in this case the color that I'm going to give this is a um, RGB value with an alpha channel and the alpha is going to be 0.8 this can be as dark as you want so you could choose one two three whatever you want but 0.8 looks like nice with this color so we can leave it as that you can of course give this a color of your choice it doesn't matter so let's take a look at what this has done. You can see now that's created the triangle. Now we've, we're halfway there, but obviously we don't want this bit in the background. So we create another pseudo element, dog ear before. And basically this will let us um, do the same thing. But this time we're gonna have a border bottom and a border right. Basically the opposite of what we've already done with top and left. And this will give us, give us a triangle in the opposite direction. So let's do this now, but we'll give it a color like black, just so we can see where the positioning is for this. So we're going to say border bottom. This is again going to be 20 pixels solid and transparent for the for the bottom border. And for the border that we actually want to see, this is going to be 20 pixels again, solid. We're going to change this to white in a minute, but for now, just, let's just change this to black. And you can now see we've got a triangle in the opposite direction. Now, if the container... Uh, in the background or the, or the area you're placing this on was black in the background, then you would obviously choose this color as black. In my case, the background is white by default, so I just choose white for this color, and that gives us that effect. So we've now achieved a dog ear effect with CSS extremely easily. So now is the time when we start to play around with this text because what's going to happen is if we change this text, just change this so add another B in here there so now we're actually starting to see or if we have one less B that this is overlapping this so it's starting to look a you know a bit rubbish because that wouldn't actually happen so if we introduce this padding right that we commented out earlier that will actually push all the content um, inward so what's going to happen now is when we have this, that's as far as it will get because if we look at the padding here, you can see that the green area on the right hand side is pushing that content away from it. You do get slightly less space here and it may start to look a little bit odd. However, you could alternatively increase the entire padding of the whole container. So for example, you could get rid of the padding on the right and you can change the padding to 20 pixels and that would then push everything away naturally and equally on each side. So you can see that the green area now represents the padding and that is far away from the dog ear. So that's how we create a dog ear effect with CSS.